dust, noise, motorcycle, everything, because it's very different from Europe. You cannot see the bicycle and for the motorcycle. The kills, the kills. Yeah, everything, and you just find this. <laughs> What is this? Welcome back to TCTV One USA and the Tony Shira Show. I am hanging out today with Hobo Keller, Violet Mwandenga. Please brace yourselves because we are just about to move this journey to another unique level. My husband and the father of all three kids decided to kidnap them, them and flew to Tanzania without my consent. There was a wedding in Florida. It's about time. TCTV One, USA. Obokel. Yes. You've left your children at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And your family and your business. My husband and the father of all three kids decided to kidnap them, them and flew to Tanzania without my consent. There was a wedding in Florida, 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, Luambari, the daughter of Luambari, her name is Joyce in Florida. They just reached out to me. We are going for a wedding for our daughter. I said, oh, wow. do you want to escort her? I said, yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah, okay. we started processing and everything, and we went to Florida. On my way to Florida, we couldn't... It was uh, 2018, July. So are you are you still working for the government at oh, that yeah, time still? Yeah. I okay. used my leave now. I used my okay. annual leave okay. to come out mm -hmm. of the country for the wedding. Mm. Yeah, when I was in... in uh, How did you get the visa? Is, is it not difficult to get the visa from Tanzania? No, to, I use my annual yes. leave. My boss letter is there and everything. And they know I'm reliable. They see the passport. I have gone to Europe and back. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. So I came uh, in Amsterdam when I was connecting flight, you know, my phone and looking for the Wi-Fi. I need to communicate with uh, people in in the U.S. That mm -hmm. was my first time because Europe is close. Mm -hmm. But America is very far, very far right. a lot of hours. So somebody, you know, for me, my nature is smiling. I cannot right. handle five minutes without smiling <laughs> if, I, if I have somebody. So... When I was looking, checking out who can help me with the Wi-Fi, right. there was a lady just smiling. Her name is Dewi. Okay. I said, can you help me find the Wi-Fi? So she found somebody, fixed the Wi-Fi on my phone and said, okay, have a number. Let's communicate. Send me a message. At that time, they were calling us to board. Okay. <laughs> Going to Florida. So we just text each other. And when we went to the flight inside the flight and we were texting each other, she became my friend up to now. Oh, wow. Her name is nice. Dewi. She's Indonesian. Okay. She's back. She has a baby. Now it's grown up about maybe six years. Uh, no, it's five years. All right. Yeah, so how is how we make friends? Nothing yeah, I mean, is I, for I, I, coincidence. No. I, I think you're pretty outgoing, you know, as a person. You're, you're very, very friend. You're very easy to make friends yeah, with. Yeah, I'm a people's person. Yeah. 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 So you've left Tanzania. You're now coming for this wedding. Uh, uh, wedding succeeds. Do you, How long do you stay? It was 11 days. Okay. Yeah, but I forgot something. After getting married, mm -hmm. I got children. Right. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. important, but I don't mm -hmm. know why. I, I'm just excited to talk other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, two I, zero I think zero. it's because the story is about coming to America. Probably. Yeah. That's maybe. Why. But it's but, it's part of them. Yes. It's, my firstborn is Abigail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was born two zero zero eight, and two zero ten. I got another baby. My mm -hmm. son Azariah and. 2012, another baby. My, her name is Rejoice. Beautiful kids. I've met them. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> they are. Mm -hmm. So I left them in Tanzania coming to America. Um, after Amsterdam, going to Florida after wedding, everything. I, I, will, I have a con connection to New York on my way to Tanzania. Okay. From Amsterdam. So in New York. When I was there waiting to to board another flight to Amsterdam, mm -hmm. you know, there is waiting hours. Yeah. Don't get tired sitting down. Yeah. So I was just walking by with my... 
smile. <laughs> smile. Of course. And one lady was having a spa and doing something, and she might smiles. Oh, hi, hi. Oh, hi. My name is Violet. Oh, my name is Erica. How are you doing? Yeah. What? What? What's up? I said, I'm waiting for a flight. Oh, yeah. You can relax here. I okay. sit on a chair. The massage chair. Massage chair. Did, 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 did. Okay. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> it felt very good and said, yeah, enjoy it. Had you had don't you want... ever done that kind of thing before? I don't remember. I don't remember, no. But it was very relaxing, mm. very nice. And right. she didn't charge me, but wow. she was very friendly, mm-hmm. er- Erica. And she said, yeah, I have a safe flight. And she gave me her number and we just chat a little bit. It's nice. Erica, yeah, it's like... She, you show kindness to a stranger you don't know. Right. So <laughs> I went back to my home country, chatted a little bit, and then life went. And so when I came back to America again, I texted her. We text each other for a little bit. Before, 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 before coming back again. So you've come to the wedding. You've had this experience. You've also met Erica. You go back to Tanzania. Yeah. What's your mind like in this moment? Are you still feeling that this is not for you? Yeah, when I came here, I think I love life here. What would you say was the difference between Vienna and America? Oh, Vienna, they were smoking a lot. (laughs) (laughs) I was... Really? Yeah, I think they smoke more than America. That was a bad thing I have seen that way. Mm. Yeah, it, it was, everything was good, but the smoking. That's interesting, Here, why you would pick on just yeah, like I, I something wonder. like that. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah, they have places to, but, you know, you are outside waiting for a train and then people are smoking. Everywhere. Lot. Yeah, that was one thing I say. No, it's not good here in America. You know, you see the sign, non-smoking area, mm-hmm. and smoking. I think there. Yeah, but you know, first countries, first world countries, they yeah. are modern. You know, clean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not saying the exception. Don't no troubles, but I love America, and I wish I could be belonging here, but I don't know how. Mm. So I went back. Life was not easy. Mm. You no know, kind of job and lifestyle and all other stuff. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, even the family, things was kind of screwed up. What were you doing? Uh, I mean, uh, so you're still working for government. Yeah. Um, and uh, your husband was a dentist at the time. Mm. And you're still raising kids. Yeah. Are they going to school? How is their life? How is your family, basically, yeah. in between, especially between this first time you've come to America and you've gone back. I'm I interested was, in that segment of it time. It was tough because mm. I started a school, Peace Daycare Center. Mm. Yeah, my aim was to start a primary school. Me, okay. um, I have a business, business mindset. Mm. It's like there's something I have to do more. It's not just one job. My mm. mind is not just working with, with one thing. Mm-hmm. So when I'm working with the anti-corruption office, uh, evening time, uh, you know, my free time, I have a side hustle, which is mm-hmm. a school. So when the kids are growing, they need to be, to continue, you know, the power of continuation. So parents wanted me to start a primary school. Mm-hmm. So I bought a land in Mihama to have a primary school. And many things was not working right. I was praying and yeah, to make a long story short, the experience was not good with a lot of prayers. And one day I one day I got a call from the lady, her name was in Katie, mm-hmm. coming from the same tribe we met when we were young. Mm-hmm. She's in Minnesota. Okay. And she said, out of blue, Violet, yeah, pray for me. And I have a fiancé. We are about to get married. Pray for us to have good health. So, wow, who is that? And she had me working with Ami. And then I was very happy and said, do you mind? I said, I came to America. Yeah, I was told you came to America. I think your visa is still still valid. You can bring my mom. Mm. Yeah, but for me... 
that was kind of exit with the challenges I have at work, right. challenges I have in investment, challenges I have in <sighs> it's all those. Mm-hmm. Then I say, okay, this is good time, I think. But before that, it was Wednesday. I was living where I was living. I was taking a flight on Monday, Thursday, mm-hmm. <laughs> middle of the night. Just hear the voice says, when you go to America, you will not come back. Hmm. So what is that? I wake up, my husband, do you know this? When I go, I will not come back. So I'm going to leave a school on your hand and I will give you the, you know, the, the government ID so that you may give them with uh, their letter of, what do you call, a letter of resignation letter. Okay. Yeah, so we arranged everything. Then when I came, I knew I would not go back. So you, you, you hear a voice that tells you once you leave Tanzania this time, mm-hmm. you're not coming back. Yeah. There are things you can't explain. You have kids. Yeah. Yes. What's this? What's what's going on in your mind at that time when you hear this message? You know, the reason I'm asking you that is because today, actually, this is very coincidental. Let uh-huh. me just digress a little. I was in church today, and the pastor, Pastor Shiko, mm. uh, was preaching, and um, she was talking about uh, you know uh, walking the race, like yeah. you know we are we are on a race and mm-hmm. we walk with purpose and. Um, one of the things that she was talking about is walking by faith. Mm-hmm. Not and by she sight. Says, yes. And she, you know, put out names of people like uh, uh, Abel, mm. David, Abraham, Rahab, mm-hmm. you know, and even Noah. And, and you know, as she was explaining, she says this part that got me, um, like sometimes God will tell you, yeah, do this, like he told Abraham. Mm-hmm. Like move from here, go to a distant land yeah. because that's where your inheritance mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. But then there is a huddle that in comes between. in. You are sacrificing your son. Mm-hmm. And so when she was speaking about it, I mean, we are in America now. She's speaking to the congregation. And she says, you know, sometimes like, can you imagine, for example, right now, mm. what was going on in Abraham's mind? If right now God spoke to you and told you, hey, leave. I need you to leave America and go to Somalia. Mm-hmm. Or Sudan. <laughs> oh, go to you know, Gaza. So, yeah, yeah. So like then she brings it out in such an interesting way because then you would be questioning God like, what You're not even telling on? me to go back to my motherland. You're telling me to go to strange, strange, such a place like you know. So she was saying, like, I mean, it's in those times that you would find yourself probably questioning God. And yeah. I'm just drawing back yeah, to your story, the story yeah. and and wondering, you have your kids, you have your business, you have all these things, and mm-hmm. then something is telling you that you're not coming back. Yeah, when you go, you just so. It, Yes, just a pack and go. That was so. Uh, my husband was supporting me, and when I came, it was hard. It's like, should I resign or I go back? Should I resign or I go back? But I decided to to remain, and God knew. God knew the future. No, I'm, I'm I'm interested in you now leaving. So you've you've you actually leave, and at the back of your mind, you know you're not going back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, from Tanzania. How do you land now in America? Who gets you from the airport? And, you know, like, tell us now, <laughs> you're in America. Yeah, so I came for a wedding mm-hmm. and with that mother of the bride. Oh, you brought the, yeah. the, yeah, the bride's oh, the, mother. Yeah, that was the papa. So I came with her to Minnesota after the wedding. It was nice. And I was one of the who is ministering on the wedding of session, and they gave me to read the scripture. Mm -hmm. So I'm there and playing my role, and the wedding went very nice. Then after wedding, what what next? Somebody told me in Dallas there is work to do. Then I said, okay, Mm, yeah. I took a flight to Dallas using spirit. (laughs) There is a flight called spirit. Okay. 
Yeah. So I went to Dallas. Okay, they say, okay, here, the job, you don't have papers or blah, blah, blah. You reuse somebody's name. I say, no, using another name? No. You're the same girl, yeah. non-anti-corruption. <laughs> no, 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 you no. won't do this. Yeah, and then somebody told me in Michigan that I, somebody was having it at home. You can do the caregiving job. What is caregiving job? Mm-hmm. Huh? Okay, but having growth mindset, I can do it. So, I, and that time I didn't have even flight ticket to, to money to buy a ticket going to Michigan. So mm. there is a brother who sent me two hundred dollars. So I took a bus, Greyhound. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. The Greyhound, yeah. Yeah, from Dallas to Michigan. Kalamazoo, Michigan. Okay. It took me three days. Yeah, arriving there at midnight and next day starting stu- uh, studying, uh, caregiving. Before we get there, uh, you, you're, you're traveling in places you've never been. Mm. And my phone was broken, so I, I could not take pictures on Tennessee or going right. this way. <laughs> right. So I was using my eyes to right. see. Yeah, but it was not easy, very tiresome. I, I, I'm interested in knowing how the three-day journey went, if you had stopovers <laughs> and, and how you managed and uh, Bobo Kel, Yes. You've left your children at home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And your family and your business. You've been in Minnesota. You've gone to Dallas. You're now in Michigan. <laughs> Kalamazoo. <laughs> Kalamazoo. <laughs> three days of travel in a greyhound. And, you know, when you are in, in Africa... American English is no, it's kind of different. You know, right. uh, yeah, Tanzania is British English. Yes. Very straight. But coming here and Greenwood bus, you know, connecting. Yeah. Get A. You mean you have to go to get A. You see this lane. <laughs> right. Yeah, it was hard for me, but I said, what, what does this mean? It's like, get A. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just in your story. Do you have someone that is traveling with you? No. No, just a lot. How do you take such a risk? You remember, since I was a child, it's just a solo fly, just alone. Remember, I have to go close to Zambia alone. Right. Going close to Malawi alone. So yes. for me, going to Vienna alone. Yes. Coming. At, yeah, yeah. Even when I came to America, I was alone. Okay. And now from Dallas to Michigan, alone. Just be, I'm just be careful. And my spirit is fearless. I don't fear anything. Right. Yeah, I'm just courageous and positive, like it will work out. Yeah, my legs are swelling. Yeah, but nothing is permanent. I'm going to reach there. Are yeah. you stopping over in places? A little um, bit, yeah. Kind of connecting another bus. You have to wait maybe two hours, then mm-hmm. you sleep a little bit. What are you eating? You are a Tanzanian. Mm, yeah, I don't remember, but... I think I have some money a little bit, maybe, I don't know, I don't remember, but I was not hungry, I, I was not like having no food, I was careful to find food which will suit me, which I, I know, if this is bread or this is something, yeah, it was not easy, but I did it, mm. yeah, just alone up to Michigan, and a provider received me at the middle of the night, and... Yeah, next day I started training for caregiving job. It was hard because for me it is health care. Changing of career is not easy. It's like coming from a <laughs> <laughs> anti-corruption officer. Now you are dealing with, you know, dementia. You have a... to, to, to the benefit of someone who is listening to you that doesn't know about caregiving, uh, could you probably just like just run over the activities of a caregiver. Yeah, activities of day living they call ADL. Mm. But and I it, this is what I see. Every state is different. I started from Michigan, so there is a way of training. You know, mm-hmm. first aid, how to do the. Of course, there is a common thing. Yeah. But okay, I stayed there for two months. Mm-hmm. 
then I received a call from so, so, no 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 so like I, I, I would like you to like tell the viewer like when you're a caregiver because I want us to be able to see like the the shock between the job oh. you're doing as an officer and now as a caregiver so someone needs to understand who is a caregiver a caregiver is someone who is helping a client non medical services right they are not supposed to do injection or dealing with any internal issues just mm-hmm. outside you know like those activities of daily living companionship dressing shower cooking me- uh, meal preparation things like that light housekeeping you know you are not supposed to live in a very bad environment because mm-hmm. to be risky to you and to a client mm-hmm. and <clears throat> you know you are a mandatory reporter if any abuse is happening mm-hmm. things like that and you are one of the team of a care team of a client if you are in an adult home you make sure you document everything and to be safe especially in this country document, uh, documentation is very important because mm. and caregiving if you are not documenting it, the work is not done right yeah so it's like oh you just uh, you're going no yes how the client slept you watch how the client skin is you report it to a team member if he's a nurse or a provider mm-hmm. if there is any fall you know what you are supposed to do don't lift up a client out of the floor because you don't know yeah you know how to do to call 911 if if you needed and yeah. you know all those things and as a caregiver to be very careful because that's the life of a client and yours and right. to follow rules and regulation so, to be safe so, so this is what you are doing in Michigan yeah did you have one client no it was at at home oh it was an adult home so yeah. there are several of them yes, yes. and you are part of now the team that is offering mm-hmm. these services yeah we are in scrubs it was It was not easy, you know, coming from the <laughs> office, I you go you stand before people, you investigate, you go before the court. Change of career is not easy. It's like now what I'm doing now, changing diapers and cleaning, you know. How how was that? I'm interested to to know how was that to you and even as you're speaking to the people back at home, what are you telling them about what you're now doing? Yeah, just uh because for me I'm optimistic mm-hmm. since I was a child. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm here and I have to do the job. For those back home I'm saying, okay, yeah, send send the dollars. You don't know where they're coming from. It's very different. Right. Yeah, it's not easy. Right. Yeah, sometimes you sleep late night. If you are at night, you If you are a caregiver you are in a night shift you are not supposed to sleep maybe something is wrong to a client what is going on maybe yeah it's a very unique kind of job and mm. it needs our intellectual and very patient because for me and another thing my mom when i was born my mom was mental ill mm. yeah she was not okay so mm. the, dealing with somebody who cannot you know it's giving 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 that's me since i was a child so for me i'm doing very well mm-hmm. with any client who is upset or depressed or with anxiety anything with a mental illness mm-hmm. for me it's, it doesn't bother me right because i was born in that environment yeah. so even as a caregiver to see the level of abuse is to be very careful for a caregiver yourself i remember So what have you to do the CPR and everything you know mm. you are dealing with this suspect back back home and now you are doing CPR <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, and, the, these are these are worlds apart the careers are yeah, so far apart yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, but, but if you are positive like how i'm saying i'm a life coach for positive mindset right It, If you are a caregiver coming from a government officer and coming here without growth mindset no you cannot you cannot survive Mm-mm, it it's, it's hard right yeah you can be depressed and with all the anxiety but if you have growth mindset yes put yourself there do more than you are required to do you know 
make sure you are there, not be on phone all the time when the client falls down and you are not there, or yeah. a client is dying, you you are not reporting, you are not yeah. there. And yeah. Yeah, it happens. For the first time, I was with a client and she died. In in Michigan? Michigan, yeah. Mm-hmm. She died, so going. I was going to change her. I know the time to change. So yeah, she's not responding, and yeah, I called the provider. A client. Died. How how did you deal with that moment? Um, like even just 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 discovering this person is not responsive. Yeah, he's he's dead. But after learning on caregiving, when a person is at the end time, you know, mm-hmm. there is sign. So was, somehow at the back of yeah, your mind, you are prepared. Some... Yeah, any time. Yeah, mm. because I was feeding, she cannot swallow. Mm. So, yeah, things like those. So when I see it's not responsive, it's not, and I called the provider. It was not my first time to see a dead body. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Granted. Okay, so now, uh, Michigan, how long did you... Two months. Okay, and then? Mm. Then I'm told there is a lot of opportunities in Seattle. This is where we are Yeah, now. because there, Michigan is not... They were paying $10 per hour. How, how was that compared to what you were making back in Tanzania? Oh, it was more, but it's not enough. It was more than Tanzania, mm-hmm. but it was... You know, you are looking for green pasture, things right. like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. so they told me. So I was kind of seeing what can I do. Yeah, just to go and see. Then I can tell my boss I'm not coming. Right. Yeah, then I took a flight alone coming here. To Seattle. Yeah, another friend received me. Right. Her name is Monica. Okay. And another, there is a lady, Mrs. Akeo. They know I'm coming here, so they were helping where I can settle down. And I have another friend, my, her name is Gesa. Okay. So, yeah, they put me in a system. Do Are these people that you knew before you left Tanzania? No. <laughs> where did you meet these people? Just knew them in communicating. And communication is just. That's how I'm a people's person. So right. wherever it leads, it's, <laughs> yeah, and it turned wow. to be a nice thing. Those people, they became a close friend of mine, and I mm-hmm. really appreciate them. Yeah, like Monica, she carried me, you know, taking TB test and all those th- things. Yeah, yeah, it was not e- easy, but we made it, and I really appreciate their help. You know what? If you are ca- you. You are host, hosting somebody who was not here before. Mm-hmm. Just to show kindness. So, show kindness to a stranger and it will help a lot. Tell me, um, is, is Monica Tanzanian? Yes. And uh, the other two? Yes, but they came here before a long time. Okay. So the reason I'm asking you that is to pick on the importance of belonging to a community or finding oh, a community. Yeah. Um, that can like be support, a support you, system, yeah. yeah, you know. So, <laughs> like, if Mrs. Akeyo is my pastor in Mwanza, Tanzania, is mm-hmm. his wife, so at least I knew, mm-hmm. yeah. But it's through communication when I was in Michigan, you know, you communicate, you know, yeah, it's just to find a community, a place you can belong. Right. Yeah. It's it's about connection. Mm-hmm. Oh, is, oh, we have a newcomer here and need help. Oh, okay. If you are required to pay something, things like those. So it's when I came to here in, in uh, Seattle and knowing on how to file papers and I'm told, you yeah, oh, your husband can come here and the kids as a student and finding somebody who can help and working hard. I got a job in Mount Tellers and at that home, making some money and paying a lawyer and feeding all those stuff and right. bringing my husband, the kids. Yeah, that's so how it So you're happened. reuniting with your family. Yeah, after six months. Oh, that's not too long. Yeah. That's <laughs> it's kind I mean, of you're unique. Still, you're still discovering... Uh, uniqueness. Yeah. 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 Many people are wondering how comes, but... Yeah, because many people in America, they don't have their children, they don't have their husband, their spouse, and... Yes. Yeah. But I... 
maybe that voice will told me go not come back they are the ones to join you <laughs> they came over then we started life in everett we stayed there for two months then somebody said oh in bellevue there is a place a woman is having cats and can allow you to stay there mm-hmm. paying little money mm-hmm. so we took our kids and go there mm-hmm. they were enrolled in school yeah life started and without knowing what the future holds right you oh, have your kids anton you when <laughs> you cannot anton you remember it's when you came to see us i i do i do remember coming to see you uh it was around easter time no 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 thanksgiving thanksgiving yes yeah 2020 yes. it was thanksgiving I of course I'm doing photography and, and I, I met, met you on in media. caregiving telegram yes, you were saying group. about photograph and yes yeah. and then you asked me to you know put together this collage for you mm-hmm. you wanted to give as a gift to the house owner the, the house owner where you were staying with your family yeah right and I came over with- I I you know I I <laughs> You came over with your friend. Yeah, I came with my girlfriend, now yeah. my wife. Oh, yeah, that's yes. good. And you t- we take picture, we took picture. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we took a picture. Yeah, humble beginning, there. but we never know how the life will turn after that. Right. Yeah. It's I know, unique journey. And I know <laughs> there's a whole package, and I can see you shaking your head right now, mm. um, because something happened sooner after that that i know would be uh something you would probably have difficulties talking about mm. but just to introduce it so that we can uh you know end this podcast for today and then pick on that on the next one do you want to just touch a little yeah just a little that? bit yeah it's it's a, that is the beginning of the born of the unique journey life coach Right. Yeah, so our life went uh 2020 end of 2020 close to January something happened a horrible thing can happen to a family it happened to us. My husband and the father of all three kids decided to kidnap them, them and flew to Tanzania without my consent. Yeah, I called 911 uh, was involved and they could not stop him because he's a biological father. The police told me you have to file for a screening order for him. For Nobody will stop him because he's a father. So when you have a paper from the court, it's a screening order, then we can stop. And somebody can ask, how would it happen? waiting for four hours. The husband never came back. And the kids, you can see the picture. They were young. Viewers, we're going to take this um, break from this story, the story of how Hobo Keller's family went through a very, very horrible experience as she just mentioned. But we're going to talk about that on the next episode. This is the Bridge Podcast coming to America, and uh, you've been sitting with me and Violet Hobokela uh, of <laughs> Unique Journey Life Coaching. <laughs> Remember to subscribe and share and like what you see so that we can get these stories going on. My name is Tony Shira. See you on the next one. It's about time. TCTV One USA. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.